resource speaker esteemed participants ladies and gentlemen we convey our sincere thanks to all professionals for their time and presence for day 2 virtual workshop on the topic on construction of dams in weak rocks ladies and gentlemen now may i invite today's first resource speaker shri vivek tripathi for the presentation let me introduce briefly about the speaker shri vivek tripathi is director in central water commission has nearly 20 Eight years of commendable success in organizing, directing, controlling technical and commercial aspects within the hydropower irrigation projects. His proficiency in planning and designing embankment concrete dams, with a flair for adapting modern construction methodology and numerical modeling, he successfully managed multiple projects and milestones while ensuring projects compile with all cost and scope specifications. His expertise are in inspecting field sites to observe and evaluate conditions, devising design concept and construction methodology for dams. He present in DRIP Dam Rehabilitation and Improvement Project funded by World Bank, panel of experts from India. Now I request Sri Vivek Tripathi ji to make the presentation. Please over to you, sir. Okay. Good morning, all of you. uh i'm sharing my ppt so is it uh, visible to all yes sir okay yes so, sir visible so today uh, we are going to discuss the dam on weak rock foundation so briefly dams uh, are very high cost structures also high risk structures so high dam we generally define height wise if it is uh, more than 15 meter high and uh, i am giving uh, some statistical data uh, as uh, surveyed by i cold uh, total number of uh, dams in the world is 50 8818 about 7.5% have suffered deterioration and 0.7% have failed so this is a worldwide scenario in a nutshell so as per uh, worldwide failure of last dams these are chronological order year wise you can see total 202 large dams had failed and in indian scenario uh, these are the large dams in india so india ranks third with over 5700 large dams with more than 90% dams older than 25 year old so percentage types of dams constructed out of all dams these are the percentage uh why is uh, type of the dams earth fill dams are 62.5 rock fill 4.8 so we are seeing that earth dams are more in number sir sir perhaps uh, uh, slides are not moving sir okay i don't know whether it is in my system only or everyone else is also facing the same issue. no slides are not moving sir is it is it moving no no sir i am turning off my video i think uh, then sir could you please make it in flight mode mode yeah now it is moved now please check 
whether moving? Uh, no, sir. The slide is still. Can you uh, move your slide? Then we can uh, see it, yeah, if I'm it is moving, moving or not. You still not moving? No. So what we can uh, see is the slide with the name percentage failure on of concrete dam. This is the slide. Uh, Ma'am, can you confirm? Uh, are you able to see the first slide? Uh, yeah, yeah Dam Creek Rock Foundation, the cover yeah, page. Yes, okay. you can see. Okay, I have moved on now to his moving. introduction. Now it's perfectly moving. Yes. Okay. Thank now you. it is moving. Thank you. Okay. Again, Dam scenario. Now it's moving. Yes, yes, it's moving, okay. sir. Fine. Moving now, sir. Dam scenario. Yeah, so I was telling that uh, total uh, percentage of uh, if we divide the type of uh, based on the type of the dams, so most of the numbers are earth fill dams, which is 62.5%. And gravity dams are only 25.1% all over the world. So if we see the failure of the concrete dams, so uh, arch dams, a failure is 0.7 percent, buttress dam failure is 2.6 percent, and gravity dam failure is 0.3 percent. Mm. So causes of failure of the concrete dams. If we uh, only concentrate on the concrete dams, so due to overtopping, this is percentage is 29. Piping and CPS, zero percent. You can, but uh, some number are negligible. Foundation is 53.53 percent. So foundation factor is very important for concrete dams, and others factors are 18 percent. Most of the dam have to be built on the complex foundations. Generally, concrete dam we cannot find, or it is difficult to find a uniform strata for the foundation. So Generally, the structure built on complex foundations requiring a special treatment. So various types of geological features encountered uh, during the exploration when we uh, go for the design of foundation. These are faults, shear zones, shear seams, shattered and highly jointed rock, foundation with more than one type of rock with different properties. We cannot find the uniform or homogeneous isotropic rock. Folds, varied channels, jointing pattern of rock mass, caverns, and springs. So, various discontinuities parameters are spacing of the joints, orientations, their dip and dip directions, persistence, size, and safe, of course, roughness of the joints, aperture, discontinuity sets, block size. Uh, most of, uh, I think uh, these points would have been covered in the previous lectures of yesterday's. So these are the, if you see the sketch form, these are the discontinuities and in discontinuities there are the filling materials, block size, these all the apertures NC pays all these affect our dam foundation. So now we are addressing the problems in the foundations. Mechanical problems leading to excessive stress concentration due to these uh, non uniformity in the rock uh, results in excessive stress concentration deformations and stability problems of structures. Then hydraulic problems like possibility of piping below the dam along the weak feature such as fault, shear zones, etc. And sliding stability. This is the more important, most important factor for the safety of the concrete dam. So uh, it may slide along a weak zone 
like shear seams or joints. So when concrete dams are more susceptible to damage from differential settlements that then embankment dams because these foundation are of different materials. We cannot find an isotropic uh, foundation or homogeneous foundation. So different modulus of velocity, different modulus of deformation are found in our dam foundation. So conditions are most severe where the foundation comprise material with the different moduli. Condition for as uh, we see in figure five, uh, figure A, differential settlement can induce stresses in the concrete. And elastic and non-elastic behavior of the rock causes permanent deformation. If you uh, see in uh, figure B, then during loading, it's uh, going like this, and during releasing of the load, when we empty the reservoir, the, this graph comes up to this. So this settled displacement will become the permanent displacement of the foundation. So likewise, in the cyclic pattern, we are seeing that this displacement will be cumulative and it is detrimental for the foundation. Then another types of problems. The swelling and squeezing rock yet another special problem. In such case, the rock foundation changes after it is exposed or unloaded and rock expands, means increase in the apparent volume horizontally or vertically. It may expand in uh, both the directions. So clay shells and another one, clay shale is the rock most commonly associated with swelling problem. And its principal mechanism of swelling is uh, cation hydration. So shales that tends to slake easily with alternate wetting and drying. So it is a very problematic constraint of our foundation. So now we will go further by seeing the foundation overview of the foundation then it's a connection with the strata and the foundation relationship, then some codal provisions and design procedure based on uh, the available foundation. So rocks are supposed to be excellent foundation material, but uh, during blasting or uh, inherent uh, fractures, or fissures, we find a weak zone in the foundation. Uh, so it is always necessary to establish the com uh, competence of the rock to bear the required load at acceptable level of deformation or settlement. As joints, fractures, I have already told, I am taking one by one. So shear zones. So these shear zones makes uh, rock discontinuous, makes rock uh, anisotropic, makes rock stress dependent. So now the intact in uh, rock mass. Intact rock is uh, where no uh, through going fractures means a monolithic rock is called intact rock and fit discontinuities that intact rock when we because our actual uh, uh, scenario is rock mass we have to deal with the rock mass so we have to take into account the discontinuities present in the rock mass so these are the typical stress distributions we encounter during the loading of the structure. If joint pattern is a very first slide, see my indicator, if it is parallel, then it is supposed to be very favorable orientation of the joint. Then 
if it is less oblique then it's favorable then more oblique fair then more oblique or vertical it is unfavorable both of the these conditions are unfavorable we see as the joint patterns go vertical the stress contour these these uh, this stress contour is 10% intensity of the loading so it go deeper and deeper so we if depending on the joint uh, pattern we we decide the depth of exploration of our foundation so these are the natural deposits in the bedrock so a is a glacial till b is decomposed uh, granite c limestone karstic foundation which is uh, which is very susceptible to sinkholes during uh, saturation lime get dissolved and creates sinkholes so it is a very dangerous foundation for the uh, concrete dam structure like uh, gravity dam and uh, weather rock and residual soil over sandstone or shale this uh, d type of foundation then soil over a sedimentary rock and this is transported last one is transported soil over fractured rock so these uh, formation we may encounter during the exploration or when we go for the preparation of the foundation at the site so as per the codal provision readily available tubular form the bearing capacities of net save bearing capacities have been given so this is uh, i have taken from the code it is 12070 is 12070 so when massive and uh, crystalline bedrock the uh, 1000 net save bearing capacity and it goes last to soft shale where we find the 40 ton per meter square so this shale and soft and broken bedrock foundation when we design the structure on this strata then problem starts then we have to change the design according to our strata and rock quality and based on the bearing capacity we design the structure so this is also codal provision so net save bearing pressure based on rmr so when rmr are कोई आवाज नहीं आ रही सर आवाज गायब हो गई सर आवाज नहीं आ रही है सर मैडम कोई आवाज नहीं आ रही है सर होल्ड फॉर अ सेकंड वी आर चेकिंग ओके participants uh, the speaker has some network issue he is uh, logged in, logging in once again
प्लीज बियर विथ अस ओके मैम नो प्रॉब्लम now i am am i order to invite some people from the am i audible sir aapke nahi sir aapka network aapki awaaz beech beech mein gaayab si ho jati hai sir ah uh, actually yahan network problem hai subah se kuch maine so now sorry. you are audible sir okay oh. so up to this slide net save billing hello uh, next time if I... so up to up to this slide i have presented okay sir now so can you can see please. your yes, screen uh, now your part is your this is here sir यहाँ तक तो बता चुके हैं सर यस सर यू प्रेजेंटेड राइट स्लो जा रहा है सर आपको बहुत स्लो एक्चुअली आई थिंक द नेट इज वेरी स्लो दैट्स वाई आई हैव ऑफ माय वीडियो आल्सो Yeah, now, now you can see the screen. Yeah. Now it is visible. Now we yes, can yes. see the screen, yes, sir. Is it moving? Yeah, seeing or is screen it is appearing. Yes, it is visible. 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 Is it audible? Yes, 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 sir. Yes, audible. Yes, sir. Yes, audible, visible, both. So my slide has gone, but here. Ah, share. Slide was there. Okay. so design uh, program will often comprise the driving of exploration edit in the foundation and abutments comprehensive laboratory and in situ rock strength testing and detailed analysis of gravity and cpas forces induced in the foundation so loads are cyclic due to fluctuation in the reservoir level as i told you earlier with the large size of most dams it is possible that uh, they will be founded on material of different strengths and uh, high hydraulic gradients of water pressures are developed in the dam foundation so requirement of the design for the rock foundation of a uh, gravity dam it should be stable against sliding and overturning then 
acceptable levels of the differential deformation should be in the foundation. And then wearing capacity of the foundation with, should be within permissible limit. And of course, through uh, foundation, uh, there should be a control of seepage. Then sliding stability, we have to check uh, along our weaker plane, shear or fault, or if it is not, then of course within the structure and at the interface of rock and the structure. Sir, slide फिर से move नहीं कर रहे. I think uh, foundation of gravity dam पे ही अटकी हुई है sir. I think uh, so once make it in slide so mode sir. It is not in uh, slide so mode. If you can make it in slide so mode, then when you move the next slide, it's automatically move. Or either, yes. Stability okay. now. Yes, sir, you can. Uh... Now it is uh, visible. Slide is visible, sir, there. but yes, but it's uh, not but... moving, sir. When you move to next slide, now it's moving, sir. Yes. Okay, okay. We will show in this mode only. Yeah, we will show in this mode only. Okay. So. I was uh, on this slide, so we have to check for the stability of the gravity dam, the stability against sliding and overturning, then uh, accept, uh, acceptable level of differential deformations, bearing capacity of the foundation, and control of seepage through the foundation. So for the sliding stability, I told you uh, the stability should be checked at a weaker plane of the foundation at uh, shear zone or at fault. If it is not there, then uh, we have to check at the interface of the concrete structure and the rock and also within the structure. So these are the different geological condition uh, causing sliding. A, A very first slide, uh, very first uh, figure, brittle jointed sandstone containing beds of clay shale dipping upstream and uh, daylighting beyond the toe of the dam. It is these uh, formation are prone to sliding. Then again, the horizontal seam, clay seam, uh, uh, daylighting in the downstream, it is also B, uh, prone to sliding. C, crystalline rock containing a fault with low strength clay infilling that dips downstream. Then uh, D, E, then last is a folded sequence of sedimentary rock containing clay shale and bends. This is also not very favorable uh, at point of view of sliding. So sliding failure, maybe a passive wedge failure from the downstream. This uh, condition may also occur during the stability. We have to check the failure of the foundation in this mode also. Now for improvement of the foundation, we provide grouting and uh, drainage because ultimately to check the foundation uh, sliding we have to increase the shear strength of our contact so for shear strength of the contact uh, we can increase we cannot increase the cohesion uh, c uh, without any treatment and we only increase the Sigma N means normal stress in the foundation while reducing the uplift. So to uh, reduce the uplift, we uh, provide the drainage in the foundation or our structure. 
so grouting increases the uh, uh, strength properties of the rock so grouting are done as the to consolidate the rock mass called it uh, consolidation grouting and we provide the drainage to reduce the uplift to increase the normal stress ultimately our aim is to enhance the shear strength of the foundation so these are uh, measures consolidation grouting this fills the joints cracks crevices and the foundation making the foundation homogeneous uh, consolidation grouting is provided uh, to fill uh, the uh, cracks or the uh, crevices or uh, in the foundation during uh, which are present naturally in the foundation and during blasting operation both then curtain grouting uh, we check the cps through the foundation and drainage arrangement we provide the drainage to reduce the uplift now for faults and shear seams so for faults and shear seams we take a different uh, procedure which is called the dental treatment of the foundation so very often the faults and shear seams or shattered zone met with after excavation extend to such depth that it is impractical impracticable to clean them out entirely because we cannot go uh, deeper uh, from the practical point of view on also the cost point of view so we are concentrated on uh, this aspect depending on the stresses only how much stress how much deep our stress valve is going means 10% of the pressure if it is in the safe zone then the foundation is supposed to be safe for bearing these conditions require a special treatment uh, because otherwise stress concentration may occur in the dam due to presence of such low modulus zone because faults and seams are, have a very poor material infilling material so it has the low modulus of velocity so uh, then the differential settlement will take place and the stress concentration will occur means stress will be transferred to the higher uh, modulus uh, zones from the low modulus zones then again the, to minimize the build up of the stresses in the dam a portion of weak zone is replaced by the concrete this procedure of reinforcing and consolidation such weak geological features is called dental treatment so so in the usbr if you uh, find out uh, the ways and the literature regarding uh, this dental treatment so uh, one uh, sasta dam uh, was treated the foundation of the sasta dam was treated uh, by this dental treatment so these details are available in technical memoranda 598 and 602 you may refer these memoranda uh, usbr the influence of weak seams on the foundation deformation was investigated using two dimensional method in this and uh, it is found that beyond a certain thickness of the concrete plug when we fill by the concrete the rate of decrease in the deflection was exceedingly small so we are interested up to that depth where the influence of stress in the foundation is negligible so we go up to that depth for the treatment because it is very difficult to scoop out all the weak material from the foundation so on the basis of i have told you that uh, as per us usbr this uh, formula is uh, giving uh, given uh, based on the experience this is uh, depending on the width of the weak zone and uh, head water head or height of the dam above the foundation level in the uh, so 
the depth of concrete blood may be decided based on this uh, formula. So it is uh, one when height is more than 46 meter and uh, another one is when our structure height is less than 46 meter. So we may use as a guide this formula. So this is uh, a pictorial view where you can see the clay gauge is scooped out at a minimum 2W means uh, two times of the width of uh, the shear seams or fall and uh, filled with the concrete and ever that the structure was placed. Another uh, problem in the rock, weak rock, is the swelling. Swelling. So in uh, swelling rocks, the hold down spears, we can uh, make the provision of hold down spears or tension anchors to reduce the heaving in the rock. So we can check the swelling of rock by treating in this way. So treatment of the sliding, I have already told you that uh, increasing the resistance, shear strength by increasing the stress acting normal to the potential failure surface. We are increasing, we increase the sigma n in this way, increasing the passive wave resistance from the downstream and providing later resistance resisting forces. So this is also the shear increasing the shear strength, shear strength sliding proportional to the magnitude of the applied stress along the normal to the potential slip surface. So we apply the vertical load. We can increase the vertical load also because ulti ultimately uh, vertical load is going to increase your sigma n. So by increasing the vertical load, of the structure, we can enhance the shear strength uh, against sliding. This is uh, providing drainage, but to reduce uh, the uplift. Now, case studies. I'm going to tell one or two case studies because. Uh, This is a Pura Sanchu Dam case study. Uh, it is in Bhutan. It is 91 meter high concrete dam. So a shear zone was found running from uh, across some blocks from block five to block number eight. If you see in plan, that shear zone was running in this fashion. So there were uh, two shear zones which were uh, which are starting uh, from block 6 to 5 uh, towards left bank and from block 3rd to block 7 uh, running across 4, 5, 6 blocks. So we have treated this. CWC was consultant, is still a consultant for this dam. So this is the picture uh, and the shear zone. So this is upstream. You are seeing this uh, left bank. So this is this is this is a shear zone, which is uh, running. Uh, as you see, this is shear zone running across uh, various blocks. So if you see, this is the elevation view of a dam, that dam, it has seven ways, sluices, ways, and uh, these blocks, the shear zone was running from, this is block third, and up to block seven. So, the exposed rock mass in the shear uh, affected area uh, predominantly of medium coarse grain quartz felt uh, knees 
and leucogranite with minor pegmatite veins. Then uh, the major shear zone is dipping towards left bank side with this 50 degree to 68 degree towards north 40 to 80 direction and uh, 1.5 meter thick crust rock mass with 10 to 20 centimeter thick clay gauze was there. And uh, this clay gauze was scooped out and uh, up to the rock level. You see. And uh, showing one section. So these were two shear zones. It the structure was somewhat uh, running in this direction and this. All the gauze material from the foundation level, it has been scooped out and removed. The foundation was dressed in this fashion. The blue line you can follow. This is blue line. It has been. Followed. Cut in this fashion. This slope is right side uh, slope is eight vertical is to one. Then this slope was kept left side blue line was kept vertical because we want to remove H as this shear zone. If we would have provided uh, the eight is to one uh, slope here, then the removal of the material would have been less. Then we plug this portion up to this. Up to this Y concrete, M20 concrete. Then on this, we placed a raft. This is reinforced raft slab. The numerical modeling was done of this raft by taking the various properties or different properties of rock, shear zones, and concrete. So before placing this uh, plug uh, by exposing the rock, the rock was consolidated by consolidation grouting. Then placing after placing the concrete plug and the contact grouting was done. Then over this the raft was casted. So this is the consolidation grouting. The consolidation grouting depth was 10 meter, 3 meter center to center. Then uh, after setting of this plug, the contract grouting was done and slave was cast. Casted here. So uh, the mod for the modeling purpose, these uh, material properties was considered were considered uh, densities, Young's modulus, poisonous ratio, shear zone rock and fractured rock. And uh, this is uh, the different materials we model. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, audible, so, sir. Okay. So, a rock, shear zone, fractured rock, then. And this is uh, white, uh, this yellowish one is uh, the concrete plug. And upon this, the concrete raft or slab. Because uh, plain strain model was uh, uh, constructed and analyzed. So these are the results. So if you see the principal stresses were plotted along the depth of the raft so this is top zero is top and this is bottom that that thickness varies from 5.5 uh, meter thickness of uh, that raft to 3 to 2 meters so if we go the downstream side the thickness decreases depending on the load we analyze at uh, different reaches and provided uh, reinforcement accordingly so now dam is uh, if you see that dam is going to complete 
almost control room is uh, con uh, construction of control room is going on this is another uh, uh, dam i have taken uh, sequentially two examples where we have treated the shear zone means localized weakness of the foundation and where uh, now this finishing dam is the example of uh, a example where the foundation is almost whole foundation is weak so finishing dam was uh, is it is in uh, noorpur district kangra himachal pradesh the rock here is predominant, uh, predominantly conglomerate clay stone and sandstone having clay as a bedding, uh, binding medium so this is the borehole data this is cross section so you can see the clay stone it is uh, predominantly found at the foundation level so rock present at site at uh, has a very low slake durability then getting exposed to the air or what water as uh, accordingly excavation are to be protected by leaving a temporary cover on unexcavated material and on reaching final value of the excavation uh, laying a minimum uh, of uh, 30 cm of concrete layer to expose surface otherwise it is a friable friable so it gets shattered so we cover with the uh, the concrete during the excavation then low bearing capacity of the foundation material require a dam profile with gentle slope because uh, here the bearing capacity of the material was very low then uh, to keep the stresses within the permissible range uh, wider block width was also necessary so we have changed the design also increase sliding resistance because sliding was in uh, sliding the shear resistance was low so it for increasing sliding resistance a low shear strength of the foundation were not good enough so the downstream portion of the anoa block were backfilled with the excavated material from the foundation and compacted 90% 98% of omc then uh, foundation strata uh, consists of conglomerate sand silt stone clay silt stone layer having different modulus therefore it was tried uh, to check the differential settlement uh, that placing a block on the same kind of strata so block width was decided based on based on this concept this is layout of uh, plan of the dam this is in elevation it has the three sluices way so this is not a normal uh, section as you see in the concrete dam it is uh, both upstream and downstream has uh, the same slope this type of structure was proposed on the to keep the stresses within permissible limit so this is of structure here also the upstream slope was provided two horizontal one vertical so uh, this uh, also this is based on uh, one bulletin the i cold bulletin is 117 the gravity dam a gravity dam for future here also this type of structure is su suggested uh, in this i cold so if your bearing capacity is low in weak foundation of course bearing you will get the low bearing capacity so you have to modify your uh, design or structure so 
and uh, stability analysis was done uh, in by different load con combination on all the seven conditions a b c d up to g so this type of uh, structure was giving the sliding factor of safety and allowable pressure in this range so it is still under construction so i think uh, foundation preparation has been done and the structure has to be construct so now one may ask uh, that uh, why you have designed the concrete dam on this foundation because you can change the type of dam also so here the problem was that uh, silt load was more then uh, if we are not uh, taking uh, adequate measures for the sediment management the reservoir would get filled with sediment in one or two years so it was inevitable to give the sluices at the foundation level so that's why this uh, type of uh, structure was modified from the normal conventional uh, design then uh, I will uh, run through only do, uh, we are not going to explain because we are uh, out of time. Yes, yes, so this is Akra. Hello. So one or two example I will give and uh, we will wind up. So then you may ask questions. So I am not going in detail. Uh, this type of problem was also faced in Bhakra. So there was uh, the upstream clay stone. Uh, very deep it was scooped out up to 40 meter and filled with the concrete then the middle case clay stone similarly it has been scooped out up to some level and filled up the, the concrete and the downstream the clay uh, stone was treated by giving the raft because it was not affecting the stability of uh, this structure bakra and only the power plant was coming on this so we have provided only slab so this is example of the bhakra then uh, i am uh, leaving this uh, uh, ppt to the organizer so you can collect from them and go through the uh, content of this slide i am running through then another uh, problem uh, was in rajasthan the panchana Ir irrigation project this is uh, one kilometer long structure this uh, masonry spillway this is the earthen dam and uh, contain uh, this uh, consists of uh, masonry spillway of 123 meter uh, long so there is a problem in the spillway portion if you see in the downstream portion there was the clay vents these are the clay vents if this is uh, upstream this is the axis so this is clay vents these had been also uh, tackled by in this way. This, though it is only 11 to 12 meter structure, but uh, to reduce the uh, uplift, uh, the gallery has been provided here to check the uplift. And uh, these uh, slabs, rafts were uh, giving given here c1 these 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 to cover the clay bands in this session the reinforcement were giving so then uh, similar is one vetali dam irrigation project in rajasthan <coughs> if you see here also it is a masonry dam this uh, June was fault June. Here, this is upstream. This is downstream. So this area was in falling in fault June. So this type of uh, measure was given. A raft was given here, and Bansagar project 
in this project also this uh, type of formation was there weak zones and the chloride cyst band was there so these are the material properties uh, based on the sasta formula here also the depth of the plug was given on this uh, based on this formula this type of uh, remedial measures were given this raft up to 3 meters and uh, reinforcement was given according uh, to stress pattern one is dood ganga this is in maharashtra it is 75 meter high dam so here the clay band uh, was found in the foundation this is the almost horizontal <coughs> then to ch check the sliding this key was provided is the 12 meter deep key was provided in dood ganga this is shear key so these type of uh, provisions be provide depending on the site condition and uh, the problem encountered then then rana pratap sagar dam it is in rajasthan so here uh, some clay two clay seams were found here in the powerhouse zone then it was anchored and tied back into the rock to check the slippage here so i think uh, this is the last one this is all about my presentation now you may ask question if you any thank you sir thank you, for sir. making a First, detailed presentation you, on design of foundation for dams in weak rocks now i request to the participants if they have any questions they may ask but bit quickly as we are running late for the next session as well हेलो हेलो यस यस सर मैं आई एम आई एम स्पीकिंग फ्रॉम जबलपुर वीके भालादर इंजीनियर वीके भालादर हां सर आई आई हैव वन क्वेश्चन सर आई हैव क्वेश्चंस इफ द डैम वी आर रिगेड एंड फाउंडेशन डिड नॉट एक्सटेंड बियॉन्ड द हील एंड द टो द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ वर्टिकल प्रेशर ड्यू टू द वर्टिकल कंपोनेंट्स But as the foundation extends beyond the base of the dam, there is a tendency for the foundation to shear at the toe and at the hill. Uh, then, sir, at what this condition? In this condition, how we can uh, analyze water distribution of pressure? Actually, uh, your question uh, is not clear. I am unable to get it. Uh, what do you want to say that uh, foundation is weak? and you are putting a structure foundation sir in a rigid rigid foundation the dam no, were rigid you are, foundation you are talking about uh, about uh, already existing structure or a new structure new structure new structure okay sir it means uh, three things you have to check one is the allowable base pressure your structure base pressure should be within permissible limit of the bearing capacity or your foundation second one is the sliding stability the structure should be safe in sliding and third is uh, seepage control if these three conditions you fulfill by adjusting or designing your structure in this way because you can increase the base of the structure if foundation uh, foundation uh, uh, bearing pressures are low okay sir then you can increase the base okay sir or by uh, checking for checking the uh, sliding resistance you can provide the keys or some uh, anchors whatever available it depends on the foundation uh, strata what type of foundation strata you have Okay, sir. Any other question?
do we have any more questions thank you sir so if the participants still have any question they may write to us we will arrange the respective answer from the speaker and get back to you over the email thank you sir okay i would one like thing, to convey my more. special ma'am yeah, one thing sir? more uh, one thing more i want to tell you one reference there is a uh, i called congress 1991 of vienna there it is question number 66 in that congress you can refer that uh, congress proceeding and uh, question and refer question number 66 you will find many example dams on the v foundation either uh, amendment or uh, this uh, concrete dam thank you sir 1990 hello hello yes hello sir my another my another question is that sir uh, girna dam made in maharashtra india this is 30 meter high zone earth dam with a uh, 12 meter deposit of clean sand and it was initially intended to provide a big felt trench cut off but when excavation had progressed to about half the seepage in flow was found to be much more than anticipated then sir in such condition what we have to do to control the seepage and at uh, what extent uh, we applied the high pressure grouting actually there is a trade off between going deeper into the rock up to the rock by uh, penetrating okay. uh, the pervil foundation and by providing the cut off partial cut off so if you are unable to check the cpes means you are uh, you are worried about the ground cpes hello sir excavation had progressed to about a half depth cpes flows found much more than anticipated and how we can control the cpes sir uh, cpes you have to pump it out for uh, we uh, means a point well system well point system and all that you have to control cpes if you go deeper if you have to go deeper then you have to pump it out there is no other way or you can uh, if you are going for the partial cut off then you have to calculate the how much cpes you can tolerate this sir we cannot sir we can use uh, grouting uh, bentonite cement with bentonite cement grouting uh, to reduce permeability yeah these are these are the permeability because at the cut off trench you have to grout either uh, uh, these bentonite cement grouting or the chemical grouting depending on uh, your uh, this uh, site condition okay sir okay thank you sir thank you sir ppt share thank karwa dijiye sir i would like please. to convey my special thanks to shri vivek tripathi ji for sparing his valuable time for conducting this virtual session thank you sir thank you once again thank have a good day okay good day ladies and gentlemen now may i invite today's next resource speaker shri v k rastogi for the presentation yes let please let me introduce briefly about the speaker welcome sir shri vijay yeah Thank please you. yes please i am here yeah vijay. yeah shri vijay kumar astogi has spent his career spanning nearly 5 decades in the field of instrumentation during this period the various activities that he has handled are production technology transfer marketing system engineering installation and monitoring of sophisticated instrumentation for power and process industries he has been associated with the instrumentation of nearly every dam and hydroelectric project built in the country during the last 3 decades presently he is a country head india of geodata austria actively promoting the use of instrument data management software now i request shri vijay kumar rastogi ji to make the presentation over to you sir yes please good afternoon everybody and a welcome to this presentation on instrumentation uh, first a question to the organizer madam because we are running uh, 
uh, short of time. Will you allow me to extend it a little bit? My session, can I complete my talk for 45 minutes? Or would you like me to squeeze it, please? Uh, yeah, 45 minutes is fine, sir. Is okay, fine, okay. Yes. Okay, good. So let me share my presentation. Okay, uh, not this one. Yeah. Can everybody see the presentation, please? Yes, the sir. First slide. Yes, sir. Visible. Good. Okay. Now, uh, we heard a very good and informative talk by Mr. Tripathi in which he talked about the design of foundation uh, uh, for dams. And uh, we came to know about the uncertainties which we come across when we design foundation of a dam. Because we are dealing with uh, naturally occurring material and geology. And if we do not know as to what, what surprise we have got. Now, in this talk, I would like to uh, raise, shall I say, a few basic points about instrumentation and the salient aspects of instrumentation for dams and for hydraulic projects in general, which includes tunnels as well. See the, uh, let me start with basics, you see. See, what is an instrument? An instrument is a device which enables us to assess or know what we cannot really Ac uh, accurately find from our senses. For example, we take the example, I mean, we take our uh, normal, you know, a doctor's thermometer is an instrument which we have in our homes. Blood pressure instrument is an instrument. We go to the process industry boiler. We, we need the feed water pressure. That's an instrument. And we can go and even in medical you know, uh, field, we have the X-ray machine, which is an instrument. So all kinds of instruments are there. Now, in geotechnical uh, field, we use instruments, but there is a difference between the instrumentation used in geotechnical industry and in a normal uh, you know, subject, which I just mentioned. A doctor's thermometer, we have an instrument. If it goes bad, we throw it away and we buy a new one. Uh, we do same with a BP instrument or with any other kind of instrument, say even in a boiler, we have a pressure measuring instrument. We can always change it easily. In geotechnical industry, the instrument is embedded in the structure. It becomes a part and parcel of the structure and we cannot change it once it is installed. The instrument becomes a part of the structure. It kind of breathes with the structure and it gives you the idea of the parameter inside the structure, which you cannot know otherwise. So here is an instrument which is, it's not a question of only supply of quality instrument, supply of the best possible quality of the instrument because you can't replace it easily. It's also a question of installing the instrument because the instrument has to be installed such that it becomes a part of the structure itself and it senses what the structure is doing. So the installation assumes a great importance in, in, the, in the case of geotechnical instrumentation, which is not so in case of other kind of instruments. That's one thing. Now, we use instrumentation in geotechnical industry. If you see the slides, in the green color, we see we do measures and design optimization. Because as we know, in geology, we are we deal with uncertainties. We don't know what kind of rocks we'll encounter once we excavate. We do some, you know, exercise, we do drilling, and then we can have some codes, we can do tests, and based on that, we can design the foundation of a dam, or we can design a tunnel. We can design support for a tunnel. But when we do all these measures for design optimization, we predict certain results. We can always say that, okay, we, we design a foundation in this way and we expect the result to be like this. No, we, we, we predict the results and we measure the results, we monitor results by means of, by means of instrumentation. If the prediction uh, and we monitor the, this by means of instrumentation, if the monitoring value is not the same as you predicted, 
then we have to change our designs. For example, we we design a, a tunnel support so that a particular uh, displacement can occur or a particular, you know, the crown can come down by so much of millimeters, but you find it's coming more. So we have to optimize, uh, we have to increase the support so that we can have a safe structure. Same thing in case of dam foundation also. We, we design a foundation for a certain kind of, you know, uh, kind of uh, pore pressure or any other parameter, and you find it is different than that actually, then we have to change the design of the dam foundation. Secondly, in case of a civil lecture, in case of dam, we also do long term monitoring. Even when the dam is constructed after 10, 20, 30 years, we can keep on monitoring and we know what is really happening inside the dam so we can take corrective actions. Now, before we go further, let me talk about certain instruments for the dam and see how they work, because unless unless the the users know as to what the instrument does, he will not he will not be able to use it properly. You see, this is a, a typical dam. I've taken a concrete dam here. And the first instrument I have put here is a geodetrical optical target. Here is a on the top of, on the top of the dam. For, uh, for example, we can put a geodetic uh, or optical target, which is something like this. It's an optical target and then it is measured. I will not go into details of this uh, and we measured it. We take his reading by means of a survey instrument, and then we think the tunnel also. We can put some targets. We can take reading through survey instrument, and then we go back to this one. We see a dam, and then we can know from here as to what is the tilt of the dam. We can take the reading of this optical target or uh, from a survey instrument, and then you can find what the tilt of the dam x y z directions. So there is a simple instrument. There is something which can be replaced also. We are putting on top of the dam. We can replace it if it's if, if problematic. The other instrument I can I will talk is a joint meter between that is number two here between two blocks of a dam. We put a joint meter, and the joint meter is installed in the gallery so that we can take the reading easily. The joint meter is embedded in the dam between the two blocks of the dam so that if there is a if the two blocks separate, we can know how many how many millimeters they have separated. So it basically measures the the joint between the dam. This becomes a part of the dam structure. Of course, in this one also it can be replaced because we always mounted. If it's mounted in the gallery, it can be replaced. But if you mount it inside somewhere else, then of course it can't be replaced easily. Then we have to take take uh, you know then we have to be careful about it. Then we use extensiometers here. Extensiometer is an instrument which is mounted in the dam like this. It is it has got an anchor which is in the foundation of the dam, and then it can measure the movement of the dam. Say it if it's in a settlement of the foundation, it can measure very easily because we take its reading through the gallery. And if with respect to the anchor, there's a settlement, then we can know easily how many millimeters the foundation has settled. So that way we are able to take reading from within the gallery if it is approachable. In some cases, it happens that the instrument may not be in the gallery really. It can be even embedded also, and we can take the and we we can still take the reading if it is embedded, and then it takes the and then it measures the the uh, foundation movement. Then we have to be very careful and. <clears throat> Uh, we can still take readings from the gallery, but the instrument is embedded and then we cannot replace it. We have inclinometer here. In case we have a very weak foundation, as we have seen in the previous paper also, then we can use the inclinometer here. This number four is an inclinometer. That is number four is, it is four, this is the inclinometer. Inclinometer is the one which will give you an idea of the of the rock strata, whether it is shearing in horizontal direction, I mean, in both, uh, 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 I should say both the X and Y planes, not the Z, but X and Y planes. So it will give you an idea of the movement of the rock foundation in X and Y planes at any point below the gallery. So this gives you a very good idea about, in case of a weak foundation, it gives you an idea about movement of the rock foundation as we start constructing the dam. If you have 
completed the dam, then in the long term, say 20, 30 years afterwards also, it will give you an idea of how the foundation of the dam has moved over a period of time. Like uh, we, we, we did this case in case of Sea Salem Dam in the south, where uh, fortunately the, the persons who built the dam, they had, let a, they had left a <coughs> borehole here, where we, implored, where we installed the inclinometer and we could find that the dam foundation was really sliding. Then we use for a concrete dam, we use temperature meters. This we use here in the gallery here, I mean the structure here. It gives you basically idea uh, at, any, at any point of the dam structure, it will give you the temperature, which means if there's a temperature difference, you know, because the surface temperature could be more and inside temperature could be less. So if there is temperature difference due to which stress are created, so it makes a strain in the body of the dam. So we can measure that. Then we have number six water level. That's a simple instrument which will give you the water level up, upstream of the dam. Then we use piezometer, which are very important instruments, and I'm sure most of you have used them. That is, they are embedded in the structure of the dam, in the foundation or in the structure, even if it's a if it's not a concrete dam, then also we use piezometers to know the piezometric pressure within the soil or the rock because that is what makes the foundation or the structure of the dam very weak. So piezometers are very important instruments. They are used to measure the pore water pressure. Seepage monitoring in the gallery, we can measure seepage in the drains by means of a weir. Then, of course, we have weather station and we have data acquisition system. Now, I, I should say one thing here that, you know, when we start constructing a dam, we put all the instruments, we bury them inside and we start taking the reading. Then as the dam construction goes up, we can take these readings and we can know the changes in the, is, for example, if the if you have piezometer in the foundation, we can know how much the piezometric reading has changed as we are constructing it. If the change is too much, suppose piezometric pressure has stuck, are, increasing too much, then we have to take corrective actions so that the foundation does not become weak. So I mean to say that when we uh, do the construction, then this instrument will give an idea about whether the, the structure or the, the foundation is behaving properly or whether we have to take any corrective actions. Once the dam is completed, the all the readings of the instruments can be taken from the top of the dam because cabling is done through the shaft up to the top and we have a data acquisition system here. Now, during construction of the dam, of course, there cannot be any data acquisition system. We have to take the readings manually by a manual readout unit and we have to analyze the data accordingly. Uh, when the dam is constructed, then we can have data acquisition system here. The cable are running in the shaft and then we can take readings on the data acquisition system and, we, and then we have to analyze the data. Now, at this point, I like to highlight certain points for, uh, for your attention because these are very important points as far as instrumentation is concerned. One part is that instrument is okay, purchased, is installed, and you take the data during construction. After construction is over, you take the data through the data going system. Then after you take the data, even during construction also, you get a lot of data points you get here. Now, what do you do with such a large amount of data? You have to analyze the data. I will better, I will start uh, here itself. Okay, let me go here itself. Yeah, so the data, the instruments are installed. Okay, that is fine. But the data we get, and then we have to, really analyze the data because there is no point in installing the instrument unless the data is analyzed. First thing is that even to use the instrument, I like I like the I like the participants to know these fundamental things about instruments. For example, when you use an instrument, first first we should fr frame complete specification of the instruments and the accessories. I mean to say that there's no point in, excuse me, this phone here. There is no point in, I mean, just asking a vendor to supply the instrument and we don't even frame specifications of the instrument. The specification of the instrument must be framed properly 
and the supplier must be asked to adhere to the specifications of the instruments. I am sure CWC has got some guidelines of the instrumentation or drip projects have got a very good guideline, which I will show you in the end. And I think the instrument vendor should be asked to, to, to follow the guideline. Select a reported vendor. Even when you design the instrument, the instrument should be designed based on the particular dam foundation which you have designed. It, I mean, the instrumentation scheme for a dam cannot be just a standard scheme for any kind of dam. It, it has the, the instrument layout has to be designed to meet your requirements. For example, when you if you see a weak structure of a dam, if you see a weak geology is there, then you should use more of some kind of instruments. So the instrument design should be done as per the you know dam foundation required. Frame complete specification, select a reported vendor proven record, and because the dam construction will take maybe three to four years, you have to give to the vendor a schedule of supply of instrument based on the schedule of construction. And my suggestion is that you must carry out a PDI, what we call a P dispatch inspection at the instrument vendor's premises before the instruments are dispatched. From my experience in instrumentation, I have seen certain users just ordering instrumentation. First of all, no specs are there. They just say, OK, supply me 10 numbers of piezometers, two numbers of temperature meters, joint version like that without any specifications. That's the first mistake. Secondly, no PDI is done. That is, the vendor is left free to supply the instrument what he likes. There are no specifications. Even if the specs are there, there is no PDI. We don't know what the vendor supplies. So there must be a period of inspection. And when the instrument is installed at site, as I mentioned earlier also, in geotechnical instrumentation, installation is a very important part. Unless it's installed properly, it is of no use. It is of no use at all. It's not like a blood pressure instrument or a doctor's thermometer that you can throw away. So you have to install it properly. Before installing, you have to do at site pre instruction check that instrument, instrument performance must be checked at site by giving some uh, manual inputs to it before installation and also immediately after, after concreting and after installation. So the instrument should work before installation and after installation. Once the instrument works after installation and after it's embedded, there is a very, very good possibility that it will work throughout the life of your structure. It may work for 30, 40 years, there is no problem. But you, you have to be careful that once it's reinstalled, it has to work at that time. Because these days, the instrument technology has gone so good that you know, instruments are very reliable. And once they are installed and they are installed properly, we see no reason why it should fail. The last recommendation which I like to say is that uh, you must please insist for a permanent deployment of the instrument supply representative for installation and data monitoring. Because unless you get the data of the, from the instrument, it's of no use to you. In fact, uh, I've I've seen some users who just you know supply um, who just order instruments and they think that responsibility is over and the instrument vendor will do everything. No, the instrument vendor will supply. He will take his payment. He will do installation and per, and he take his payment. But then if the data doesn't come from the instrument, it will have no purpose to you. So data from the instrument must come, and, and for that I suggest that. Uh, Please hold on for a second. Can you please hold on for a second, please? Uh, ask him to come for two hours. OK, now uh, we you must please bind the instrument supplier unless the data from the instrument is made available. That means the instrument supplier should not only supply and install the instrument, but also give you data. My recommendation is that payment of the supplier should be staged in such a manner that he gets a large part of his payment after the satisfactory data from the instrument is given. 
at least after installation, he should give you the data and then you must release his payment. Unless that is done, you will not be sure whether the instrument has been uh, is of good quality, it has been supplied properly, it has been installed properly, and you know it's of any use to you. Now, once the instrument is installed and the data starts coming, then I, I should say that the real use, the, the real role of the user comes in. The user comes into the picture after the instruments are installed and the data has has started coming out of it because then it's your job now to study the data to analyze the data and take corrective actions to suggest appropriate actions to the geologist and other people so that they can take benefit from the instruments now uh, as far as Having said so, I like to say as far as the availability of data is concerned, the instrument installed, okay, that's fine. As far as the availability of data is concerned, uh, a software must be used to analyze the data. I can give you some examples here. You see, do, during light of a, of a project, a lot of data comes in. For example, this is I've taken an example from a particular uh, you know project where you have got during the three or four years life of the project, we have got so much a lot of data. We get data of something like 280 million data points are there. Now, such a lot of data, naturally, nobody can analyze manually. It's just not possible to analyze manually. Presently, what is done is that data is taken from the instruments, OK? Then the instrument data comes in form of Excel sheets. It comes in form of books and uh, instrument report is made and per payment is also made. Now, what is the use of those books of, of data unless you can analyze the data and make use of it? I think the fault does not lie entirely with the user. I think the fault is also li lies with the data management techniques. These days, we have to use a smart data management technique. Unless you use a software to analyze the data, you will not be able to make use of the data and understand anything from it because you know when the data starts coming in the construction work is going on so you have to take action in time you have to maybe if you find the data in the evening you have to take action immediately on that unless you take the action immediately the construction cannot stop for that so you want a very quick data management these days we have digital platform digital technology has entered into almost all the fields of our activities but I think I must uh, say honestly that I feel personally the construction industry is the one industry where digitization has been very slow to adopt. They're very slow to, to adopt digitization of the, this thing. These days, you see, softwares are available where on one, on one platform, on one PC or, or on one mobile, you can get idea about the entire thing about the project. I'll just say instrumentation first of all. As far as instrumentation is concerned, it's just one part of it. Monitoring. All the instruments which are monitored, the data from the monitor instruments can be collected and it can be presented to you on a on your PC. Any number of people can 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 see the data simultaneously. Not only the, the site supervisor, even his consultant, even his other senior stakeholder, they all can see data simultaneously. Not only instrumentation data, they can see the instrument geometry, geotechnics, geology, structures, if you have TBM, TBM movement, you have construction, alarming, documentation, everything is available on one single platform, on a one single bus you can see, and it's very easy, this all web-based system, there's no limitation of users, any number of users can use it, and then you can, you can immediately analyze the data and take corrective action. Now, I'll, I think I must give you some examples of the data analysis which is done by by software these days. First of all, in this, you know, this one here, you can first you have to input the data and then you have to make a database. For that, you can use any kind of file formats. You can use AutoCAD, AutoCAD, CSV, HTML, of course, PDF. All the file form can be entered and they form our main database. You have an extension meter. I give an example uh, of a tunnel because that's easy to understand. Of course, extension meter used in in the foundation also. So it will give you on one click of the you know mouse, it will give you an overview 
it will tell you where the extension is is mounted it will give you the data from the extension meter it will make blocks here it will say here displacement is less here displacement is more so you get a very good pictorial idea of the of the structure as to what what is being seen by the extension meter you can see it very easily here you see you see here in clarimeter if you see an inclinometer it will give you an idea not only of the displacements in the a and b displacement it will also give you simultaneously idea of the geology for example blue is uscs low plastic clay then polygraded sand silt everything so we give you right so it gives you an idea of the geology the hole is located over here it shows here there's a plant layout it will give you look the hole located over here it will give an idea of the geology so you can very easy analyze the data and see as to where the the uh, 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 you know the movement is taking place in, in, in which geological strata the movement is taking place so these things are very clear here you if, if you're making a tunnel then you see here it will give you an idea of you see here this one uh, we make tunnels here for example if we make tunnels over here we can mine we, we can put optical targets here we can do with the help of surveying and it will give you a map of this one this kind here it shows by arrow the length of the arrow is proportional to the displacement here so it will tell you easily at one glance as to when you do this tunneling how the surface movement is taking place it gives you very good idea of that through this diagram you you have similarly you have optical 3d targets and it will give you within the tunnel how the optical target i mean how the displacement is taking place with the, within the tunnel it will give you idea like this it will give you idea of the movement horizontal direction vertical direction x y z three direction and plotted with the with the uh, excavation that means when tunnel is excavated how the movement is taking place it will give you all the idea here it it has given you a picture also as to how the targets are mounted so this is very good way of presentation and this thing comes to you daily in the evening when you do the construction daily evening you get this kind of a picture if you have a tunnel then it gives you uh, i already mentioned to you that it gives you an idea of the x y z movements of course here you see the movement x y z movements but here yeah. apart from that it gives you some other good pictures also for example this here i'll just show in detail this is the picture where this is the tunnel and this is the crown point now it tells you that see this different color schemes are so red is 2 days after excavation green is 4 days after excavation blue is 6 days and then it is 8 days 10 days after excavation so if you go along the length of a tunnel it will show the crown how much the crown has moved 2 days after the excavation 4 days after excavation 6 days 8 days 10 days all these points of the crown on various points of alignment it has shown as to how they have moved the excavation over a period of time so this way you are able to know very easily as to how the tunnel is settling so that you can take corrective actions you can increase the supports and you can take you know any other action which are required so this is a good picture view this is another diagram which in, in the tunnel itself it gives you an idea about the movements of the of, of the various points in the uh, vertical and in the lateral directions vertical lateral it has drawn a vector here and it has given you with days that is 1 2 3 point they are they pertain to different dates so with time passing how this crown has moved it gives you an idea in x and y that is in the in the horizontal vertical direction and this give you the lateral movement that means when you excavate the tunnel you see that actually the points are coming towards you you normally expect that when you excavate it will go beyond you but no because of squeezing pressure it is actually coming towards you so when you excavate you find the longitudinal movement itself so the other diagrams which are made through the software and they are able to give you actually what is happening in the tunnel it will give you alarms once you can always set the limit when the limit is crossed it will give you alarm 
and the alarms are given by SMS or by emails to the designated IDs so people can know and they can take immediate corrective actions. So this all is done automatically. Now, as I mentioned to you, apart from monitoring, the software also gives you an idea of the complete construction. For example, it will give you progress. This is again from a tunnel only. Uh, here it gives that, say, blue is the is the heading of the change, main change. Then green is, uh, I mean, there is benching, and then the yellow also is benching. So it gives you an idea of which time, how much, how much excavation has taken place. It gives you an idea. Then of different portals, it gives you an idea of the cash flow part also. That means how much the cash flow you had planned. Blue is the cash flow planned, and the yellow and the uh, green is the cash flow achieved and the yellow is the cumulative pl plant and red is cumulative achieved. So it gives you, in terms of you know graphs, it will give you an idea of the progress of construction also. So these are the kind of your know, diagram which are now it is available through the software and which I think must be made use of and they should also uh, you know uh, come into the into our dam construction industry and more and more digitization should be done <clears throat> of the whole process. Now, I'll, I'll just tell you how it is done. I think I'll go to the dam picture here. You see here, you have a, you, you have the data equation system here. Sorry, you have this, you have this here. Now, all the instruments are, are this, all data is coming through a cable to data equation system. The data equation system, send the signal to an FTP server of the cloud-based monitoring system. This is the internet is available everywhere. The DAS will send the signal to the FTP of the cloud-based monitoring system because this is all in the cloud. And then the system through the software will analyze it. This is how the signal comes automatically. Even when DAS is not installed, even when dam is, dam is under construction, this all this data from the instruments, which is taken by a uh, by a portable readout unit, can be taken in a pen drive and they can be sent through an uh, I mean uh, to the FTP server of the cloud-based monitoring system. I mean to say that the cloud-based monitoring system can accept data both automatically through the DAS when the construction is over or manually when the construction is being done. Even if when you are doing construction over here, over here, the data can be taken through a pen drive and it can be sent to the FTP server of the cloud-based system. So it will give you analysis of the data. That means what we are showing this, these diagrams, you know, which is there, these diagrams will come irrespective of whether you, are, you have installed a DAS or whether you are giving the data manually. So you are able to see at all the times good pictures and graphical representation of what is happening inside the structure and you can take corrective actions. Of course, you can see plant uh, everything here. So these, these softwares are available. I, uh, I mean, I will not try to promote any particular company, but there are companies in India who are, who are giving this software and I will say that these softwares must be used. In fact, from my experience uh, with the dam customer industry, you know, we supplied data going systems. Okay, DAS was used, but still no software was used. DAS will give you, DAS will, DAS will give you a good, you know, data from the instruments, of course, in Excel sheets, but unless you have a software, you cannot uh, really uh, see as what's happening. Now, I just like to summarize now what I said that, First thing is that when we place order for instrument, we should frame complete specification of the instruments, what we require, select a reported vendor, give a schedule to the vendor to supply. We must carry a pre inspection of the instruments, and we must follow supply method statements, do pre-installation and post-installation checks, and we must insist for a permanent deployment of instrument supply representative for installation and data monitoring throughout the construction period. We should bind the instrument supplier till data from the instrument is made available. Payment must be made only after satisfactory installation availability of data. Mind you, availability of data. 
uh, in my career, I have dealt with uh, only, I should say, one or two projects where they were very keen that, that the instrument data must come and they will pay fully only after the, uh, the data has been received. And in those projects, instrumentation has been, I must say, really very successful with a success rate of something like 80 to 85 percent, which is considered very high for a dam industry. So this must be used. And then as far as the software is concerned, again, we should frame specification of the monitoring software with suitable features, and then we should select a suitable vendor for this so that the so that the uh, data monitoring is done properly. Uh, during, uh, you know, there's a good standard here which was uh, made by DRIP, and this was done by CWC, and uh, there's a, where they have specified a data mining software. In fact, this standard specified even the instruments also, and I'm sure that I would like to share that. In fact, uh, I I like to say that uh, this one. This is the document which I came across. This is made by Drip, and this this is the one which which specifies in detail. Even the instrument specifications are given here. I do not know whether such a document is available from CWC, but it gives just it is take it to open it. See here, this is the one which is there, and it gives you. Detailed specification of all the instruments. Detailed specification are there in this. Of all the instruments are there. We see sensor, we see this one, water level recorder, like that. We have specification of all the instruments. And this, so something like this specs must be made for instrumentation and given to the vendors to supply. And it says in the end, some specs are there for the software also which of course in, in this again, the specs of software are quite brief, which is not very good because this only says uh, a few, still the time to open, it's very, in brief it gives only, see, it just says, uh, it just says the web interface functionally secure access software, all this kind of thing, that's it says, but alarms is there of course, but it does not still specify software in detail. I think software should be analyzed in little more detail so that you know you really get what you need so these are things which be which must be followed and uh, i will uh, uh, perhaps leave it to the questions now and i'd like to welcome any questions on this because i think questions and answers are more important in this field because my my experience has been that the instrumentation in uh, uh, in hydraulic projects and in dam industry is used, but uh, it is not really, you know, made full use of. And uh, payments are made just on the basis of the instrument supplied or maybe some data which is there, but then data is really not made, is not made use of. I think once the users understand the functionality, the function of each instrument, and then they, they know how the instrument works, how, for example, piezometer works and what it does, then I think uh, they will be uh, they'll be able to know more about you know using the instrument properly and making use of the data through an appropriate software. So that's all, and I would like to say thanks to everybody. I think I've been a little fast, but I'd like to say that if you have any queries, then I have my mail ID here. It is given the presentation, and uh, in case you have any questions, I'll be very happy to answer uh, now. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for Thanks making a lot, detailed sir. presentation on instrumentation performance. May I request to the participants for their questions, please? Please. No questions at all. Is there I any so. is there any is there any feeling now that the instrumentation must be used more and more or or no? Just a very straightforward question. No. That's it. that was a very good presentation. In fact, uh, uh, certainly instrument importance of into uh, instrumentation is very much. 
and uh, uh, in fact uh, there should be more realization among the dam owners that uh, the data uh, we receive from the instrument is very useful in analyzing the present situation of the dam yes, uh, unfortunately uh, in india we are not uh, giving much focus to the instrumentation uh, no. uh, and uh, we would be requesting the like the companies uh, which are uh, promoting or which are uh, producing instruments they should create more uh, like uh, awareness in the dam owners that what is the importance of instruments uh, in fact, in fact yeah. it's just uh, this guideline you showed uh, it was uh, prepared with uh, expertise from all over world and yes. uh, it is available on the website also in CWC yes. website yes. and I hope that all the dam owners use this particular uh, guideline so that yes. uh, they can fix instruments and they can uh, analyze the kind of instruments required for their dams. Yes. Is it yeah, that's very correct. good? It is a very good document, uh, but I don't know how much people are using it. Yeah, that's right, you know, because see, you said very correctly that yes, instrument suppliers should do more to, to promote the instruments and to tell benefits. But yes. uh, I will I'll say very honestly that I think users and especially young users like in this audience, they should uh, they should, uh, you know, uh, try to use more instruments just as they use a doctor's thermometer or a BP instrument at home, you know, and and they should please my my honest request is that I mean, do not give full payment to the instrument vendor unless he gives you the data. In fact, your work starts only after it gives you the data and it the instrument is of no because see, unfortunately, in the instrument industry, there are some very good instrument manufacturers, I know, but also there are some other instrument manufacturers which are not so good and they take advantage of the fact that some users just order the instrument without knowing what the instruments will do without testing them without asking for data they get away with the money even if they get 80 percent money they are happy with it okay but because they know instrument is of no use so the instrument quality i mean the user must check the quality they must once the suppose for instance suppose they say 50 percent payment will be made only after getting the data I can tell you the instrument vendors will come in line. They will definitely, they will have to agree to it every, if, if you are very firm in this. Once that happens, the quality will automatically improve, the data will come, and your work starts after data is given. You should also do your work properly after data is given by, use a soft, by using a software. Use any software which is available. And Thank then, you, sir. right, sir? This is the one. Sir. Sir, okay. but uh, uh, like, full, uh, full payment after full satisfaction, sir. Satisfactory results. Yes, after data day. comes. See, because you know, once it is embedded, data comes, it will always come. So you wait for embedding, wait for one week. See, like, you know, we did cold time project for NTPC. And it, it was first project for NTPC. I was so happy that NTPC uh, followed all the quality standards of thermal power stations in hydroelectric project for the first time. People were surprised how it will be followed because I, I mean nobody did it earlier they were surprised how they'll follow it in 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 the dams but they did it and in cold dam the instrument failure rate was very very low even now i hear people appreciating the instrumentation in cold dam so you know the the payment should be made after data comes there so that's the best thing okay but uh, but sir uh, like uh, how to change the embedded instrument in the existing dam? That is a topic uh, which needs oh. to be given more attention because uh, how to change? The dam owners are uh, really in, uh, searching for the uh, uh, such uh, uh, yeah, see. That how to, how 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 can you change those instruments which are already embedded or how can you uh, utilize any other instrument for that no. matter. Yeah, I will tell you. Can replace the same. Yes, yes. I I will give you example. See, that's what I said. See the first slide which I presented. You know, here. I will show you, please. One second. Hello. Yeah. Yes. See here. Can you hear me, please? 
yes yes sir yes sir yeah yes see, sir. typical dev instrument no see in this yeah in this we have tried to simplify like you know earlier we used to use plumb lines you know plumb lines were used here plumb lines now plumb lines were difficult to maintain so if we use instead of that modern instrument there is optical target here and we monitor by surveying method then we can know tilt of the dam by surveying an optical target can be very easily replaced from the top there is no problem right now we use joint meter here which are always put in the in the galleries only between the block button galleries so even if a joint meter goes bad then you can replace it because you are working in the gallery that way it can be done now as far as the instruments which are embedded for example if you embed a pore pressure meter sorry or if you embed an extension meter or inclinometer yes there is a problem and you see uh, i mean i i do not see any way in which we can easily replace an embedded an instrument which is embedded in the in the foundation because you drill again the only way out is that you say if uh, you know one piezometer here goes bad the only way is that you drill another hole through the gallery nearby to that and you put another piezometer or or in the beginning itself use redundant instruments after all piezometer doesn't cost much it costs just a 10000 rupees instead of one piezometer use three piezometers two piezometers use redundant instrument and you check reading of both the instruments so you get an idea about whether they were or the three instruments for example then you can take say two out of three like the reading you can take so that's one way you can solve this problem but yes some instrument which are embedded it will not be possible to change them unless and until you either you know drill a hole again and install the instruments i i think there's the only way in that case or use redundant instruments hello yeah, yes please Ah, sir, I am speaking from Jabalpur, NVDA. Yes, please. VK, yes, please. My name is My name is Vikay Baladare, sir. I yes, want please. to do some uh, understanding. Yeah. Are a better understanding of uh, instrumentation. Yeah. Both various type, various type of instrument like as piezometer are used uh, yeah. for earth and backfill times. So yeah. I want better understanding of the piezometer that sir piezometer are used in both embankment and foundation That's foundation right. piezometer foundation piezometer yeah. uh, are installed in uh, drill holes are embankment piezometer uh, sometimes also located located in uh, drill holes are uh, yes. usually placed in fill as it is being constructed so sir uh, kindly tell me would you any variant took place in a instrument of in quantum of pore pressure uh, would you variant to, uh, would any variant took place in quantum of pore pressure during the construction and after the completion of the dam yeah you see pore pressure see if you see the picture here pore pressure of an instrument like this here for example this uh, seven is uh, this is a piezometer here right now if you put so many piezometers here in the foundation see one is the what you call is a uh, i mean if you call a foundation piezometer means you can drill a, i mean we drill a hole from the gallery and we put an instrument here sorry we drill a hole in the gallery here and we take instrument of the foundation piezometer through uh, just a, a, you know a, leveling device for example we can know uh, to what is the level of the water here so that will give you an idea of the foundation pore pressure so that is one kind of instrument uh, of of instrument so, second instrument is that you can embed piezometer in the foundation itself and cable will come in the gallery and you take reading of the instrument in the piezo i mean foundation piezometer uh, in the gallery that that basically that means one is a manual piezometer other is electronic piezometer so these two types of piezometers are available and uh, uh, yeah so does that answer your question or what exactly you are asking please can you is it okay thank you sir Hello? okay sir okay yeah okay See, sir, because 
I mean, if the foundation prism from which you are taking manual reading, if it gets choked, you can always clean it. You know, you can always clean this hole and you can take the um, um, uh, and take manual reading again. The other prism that you can embed in the font in the foundation itself when a cable comes out and take reading electronically. So that way you can take both the readings. OK. OK, sir, thank you. OK. So. I believe there's any other question, please. If, the if you have any questions, still have more questions, they may write to us or to the speaker directly. We yes, will please. arrange the respective answers accordingly. Sure, sure. If you have, I will extend. I, I like to say, if you have any question about instrumentation. Please feel free to contact me. I've I've given a mail ID at the end of the slide. Please feel to contact me if you want to even know about working of any instrument personally. Please contact me. I'll be very happy to share my ideas with you. No problem. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir, Thanks. for sparing your valuable time to conduct this virtual session. Thank you once again. Thank you. Have a good day. It has day. been a pleasure. Thank you very much. With this, uh, we'll conclude this session and we'll take a break for lunch and reassemble at 1500 hours. See you all after the break. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Thank, Thank you. you.